we face fears and uncertainties in life, God offers to us more hope. Welcome to More Hope 2. We're glad you've taken time out to study this important topic of God's daily direction. I love listening to the radio. How about you? I especially love listening to good preaching or good programs that I'm able to catch from time to time. I remember one particular afternoon, I was riding along in my car listening to one of my favorite preachers. And as I listened to his sermon, I was moved and intrigued. And I remember that as I drove out of the city, another signal began to take over that station or that frequency. And it was a constant mix of the other station that had some music that was not to my taste, but the sermon was fading. And so I had to figure out how to catch the last part of that important message. I ended up pulling into a supermarket parking lot and waiting there until I caught the message close. And it was worth it. It was worth it. But I learned something there. And what God impressed me with was that so often He wants to speak a message into our lives. He wants to talk directly to us. But so often there are other signals. There are other frequencies that try to smother or push down God's daily direction. And so this study, we want to take some time to learn how to listen more clearly to God's distinct voice. Because He wants to talk with us every day. It was Jesus that said in John 5, 17, My Father is always at work. That means that God is always trying to speak to His people. He is talking to us on a daily basis. But we don't always listen. Because we don't always hear Him. And we can't always tell. That's why this study is so important to us today. And so, open your Bibles, get ready for this journey into strengthening our daily walk and communication with God. I'll be back momentarily to share some further insights into strengthening that communication. Welcome back to Daily Communication with God. Have you ever been on a cell phone call that is important to you? And as you're talking, the signal begins to break. And finally, the call drops. If it's an important call, it could be very embarrassing and frustrating to lose that signal. Well, God is always talking to us. And we want to discern His signal and have a strong connection with God. He's always directing us. The Bible tells us that God wants to lead us the way a faithful father leads his children. Jesus said that he would not leave us as orphans, but he would come and guide us and help us through the aid and the power of the Holy Spirit. There are always signals around us. There are Wi-Fi signals. There are frequent signals, uh, both AM, FM, uh, but they don't affect us because we're, we function at a different range. We don't hear them. They don't affect uh, our daily activities. God is speaking directly to us, and we want to hear Him best. Here are four things that I want to also add to your study that will help us in our discernment of God's will for our lives. The first one is constant contact. <laughs> Perhaps you've heard that term before, but we're going to talk about constant contact with God and how to maintain that. We're going to talk about counsel. We're going to also mention the third point of circumstances, how God works through them. And number four, we're going to talk about confirming confidence in God's direction. Constant contact. Constant contact. God calls us in Psalm 105, verse 4, Seek the Lord and His strength. 
Seek his face continually. Now, why is it so important to have prayer and to seek God early in the day? The reason is, is we tune in to the frequency. It's as though we're turning the scanner or turning the dial and we're trying to get into that communication with God. And so prayer is the way that we do it. When we pray to God in the name of Jesus, our prayers ascend into heaven. And just as they ascend into heaven, so we begin to fine tune the signal. And that constant contact needs to be on a daily basis and on a continual basis. John 10, as you saw in your study, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. As you spend time in prayer with God each morning, His voice becomes more discernible and more clear. So the more we pray, the clearer the signal, both to Him, but especially to hear His voice speaking to us. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God so as you spend time in study in the word the Holy Spirit makes applications from the study applications from your prayer time and it helps us to dial in so the study of the word along with that prayer time begins to increase that constant contact throughout the day with God. So constant contact. If you want to maintain a strong relationship with someone, what do you do? You talk to them frequently and often so that your voice or their voice is not forgotten, so that their tones, the fluctuation of their tone, everything is clear to you. And the more you spend time with them, the stronger you are in that relationship. Number two, counsel. Counsel. God's daily direction is also given us through the counsel of others that have had successful experiences in the journey as well. It's important who we take as advisors. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22, Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. The important thing is, to increase our communication with God, those advisors, those counselors, need to be men and women who are also tuned in to God. Men and women who have had experience in their Christian walk and who have learned the secrets to successful living. So be careful who gives you advice. You don't want to take advice from folks that perhaps haven't been successful in the area you're struggling. But there are always godly men and women that if we ask how they found victory, they'll be happy to share their story. And God may give us wisdom and direction through their testimony and through their experience. And so thus, we save many heartaches and have more clear direction from God. Godly counselors. Godly counselors are what we need most. And don't forget that as you spent time in the constant contact early, the Holy Spirit given to us by God, as he says in John 14, 18, I will not leave you as orphans, but I will come to you. He will direct us. God will show us the way. So the Holy Spirit counsels, directs, and people who are godly men and women also give us wisdom through their testimonies and their sharing as well. That's why it's so important to study together the way you are studying now, because this helps us uh, in our own journey to strengthen the signal. Another way that God works is through circumstances. Circumstances. God opens doors and closes doors. That's what he says in Revelation. In Revelation 3, he says, I have set before you an open door that no man can shut. So there are circumstances that God permits, things that happen that 
are sometimes used by God to help us navigate safely into the center of His will. I'm reminded of the story in the book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 19, where it tells us that there was persecution in Jerusalem. After the stoning of Stephen, who was the first deacon, the church was under persecution. Now, none of us want to be persecuted, for sure. But the persecution precipitated and advanced the preaching of the gospel. So sometimes a door that closes, like it did in the city of Jerusalem, is actually an opportunity to bring the gospel to the whole world, and that's what God used it for. Another story took place in the book of Acts, chapter 16. In Acts chapter 16, Paul was arrested and imprisoned. He was in the city of Philippi, and as Paul and Silas were taken into prison, they could have become discouraged because the doors closed. They weren't able to share the gospel or preach the way they wanted to. But what they did instead is that while they were in the prison, they began to sing hymns. They began to praise God even in the prison. They did not allow the circumstances to deter them from the needed signal they needed from God. They trusted Him. They rested in Him. And as they sang and as they worshiped, the Bible says that suddenly, suddenly there was a mighty earthquake. Suddenly the doors of the prison swung open. Suddenly they were set free. Now, what in the world can God do through circumstances like that? I'll tell you what He did. The Bible tells us that the Philippian jailer was present and he saw the wonderful thing that God had done. How he swung open the door. The door that the jailer had shut, God swung open. And the Bible tells us that that jailer, that day, was baptized with his whole household. So God worked through circumstances, though they were not the most favored circumstance. God still worked. And God brought about great glory to his name. So when you ask, Lord, where do you want me to go to school? Lord, where do you want me to work? Lord, what do you want me to do? God often speaks through circumstances. So a door that is closed is no reason to be discouraged. It just simply means that he's doing something different in your life. So circumstances are ways that God works. The next point we want to look at is confirming confidence. And this is our fourth and final. Confirming confidence. What does that mean? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6, In all your ways acknowledge God, and He shall direct your path. In other words, when you spend time with Him in communion, in that constant contact, when you spend time with Him and you learn to hear the counsel of the Holy Spirit speaking to you and others, when you spend time learning to discern the circumstances in your life, and when you affirm Him, that constant confidence in God's direction in your life, then the Bible says and continues to say, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. So you recognize God is in control, God has this, God will see us through. That's what we want to do. By observing these four points, sticking to that study and prayer and that discerning uh, of the counsel of others and that leading through circumstance and that Holy Spirit prompting and that confidence that God is speaking and directing our path, we are able to strengthen our walk with God. So as you spend time with Him in the morning, never view it as a chore, but as a delight, something you look forward to. Because as you spend time with Him, you're able to experience that communion with Him. As you talk about Him with others and pray with others, you're able to get that information, that counsel, and then in turn the circumstances become to become more clear to you as you affirm that God is certainly in control. I'd like to illustrate this study 
with you as we close this way. I remember when my son was just probably five to six years old, we were living in the city of Collegedale, Tennessee. And while we were there, he was with his caregiver. It was actually my sister that was babysitting him. And he was in her house, and she was excellent taking care of her little nephew. And I remember that one particular day, his grandfather showed up. And his grandfather during those days was driving a big, beautiful 18-wheeler that he loved to get in. My son loved to get into that truck and pull the horn and just spend time with his grandfather. When Grandpa came and parked his truck, Across from the place we lived, my young son saw his grandfather's truck through the window. As he saw his truck, his first reaction was to run to him. So he threw the door open without my sister noticing, and he ran out towards Grandpa. But as he ran towards Grandpa, and I stood there with him, I looked and I noticed that he was about to cross a street and there was a car coming at a, an excessive rate of speed. It was coming way too fast. And as this car was fast approaching, I saw that he was about to exit between two cars or enter the street between two cars and he was, he was going to get hit. And at the rate of speed that car was moving, I knew that it could take his life. So what's a father to do at a moment like this? I did the only thing I knew how. Over the sound of the big diesel engine that was still running, over the sound of the cars and the traffic and the people, over the, all these sounds, I shouted his name as loudly as I could. And as I shouted his name, the only thing I said after his name was, Stop. Now, it would have been easy for him to miss the signal because of all the other noise, because of all the other sounds and all the other frequencies. But because he spent time with Daddy, because he had spent time with me, and he knew my voice, he was able to discern my voice above all the other sounds. Again, we go back to what we learned in this study. The more time you spend with God, the more clear his voice becomes to you. And so he spent time with dad and he was able to hear dad's voice. And the next thing he did was that as he heard the voice of his father and the voice of his father said, stop, he immediately stopped. And as he did, that car just grazed past him, grazing just a, another half a foot or a foot he would have been struck by it, but he heard the voice and he was able to obey and it saved his life. Spending time with God as a new disciple or as one that has walked with him for many years is one of our greatest honors and privileges. When we spend time with the creator of the universe, with our loving God, then he comes and visits and communes with us. So spend more time with him. Learn to hear his voice, to discern his voice. And as you discern it, follow it. If he says, stop, stop. If he says, go, go. Whatever he tells you to do, do it with all your might because he will always lead you safely home. And so thank you for the taking time to study God's daily direction. And it is our prayer that you would walk with God so closely that you would know exactly what he wants for your life. We'll see you next time on More Hope 2.